Hi, my name is Pat Connors, and I am the product manager for Genuine AMF Parts. AMF is excited to announce our new partnership program. This program offers many benefits. In addition to a 20% reduction in our parts pricing, we are pleased to provide this series of pin spotter maintenance videos featuring our resident expert, Tom Niedemeyer. Through this series of videos, we plan to introduce you to the nine principal assemblies of the pin spotter, starting today with the cushion. In a bowling center's typical day, this cushion assembly will have to absorb nearly 350,000 pounds of energy as a result of being struck by nearly 1,400 bowling balls. To withstand that kind of abuse, AMF uses only the highest quality parts in the construction of this assembly. Starting from the urethane specially formulated rivet, the cushion cover, the Buna rubber, our pin deflector curtain, following through to the hardwood plank itself, only the highest quality parts are used. To maintain this efficiency, every bowling center will need to establish some type of preventive maintenance program. We suggest dedicated time on a weekly basis to inspect all of the components that make up this assembly. This will ensure that as parts wear, they are replaced before critical wear could result in premature failure causing the machine to be down. The first step in performing preventative maintenance will be a thorough visual inspection. We would be looking for rubber rivets that are missing. They need to be inspected from both the front and the back Sometimes from the front, the head will still be there, although it's missing in the back. Sometimes it will still be in the back, although the head is missing in the front. In this case, we are missing one rivet here. We would inspect the hardwood plank for any horizontal cracks coming down through the plank or possibly any vertical cracks showing failure of the plank. Condition of the sponge rubber. We'd be looking at the positioning of the protective pad this particular pad is installed to protect the pin deflector curtain. Uh, without the pad, pins will force this curtain up against the hanger leg, damaging the curtain. So this pad is positioned all right. We'd look at hardware, make sure that there are no bolts that are missing or loose, following on up to where the ear is attached. We'd be looking at the condition of the grommets of the shock absorber and the position of the spring on the shock absorber itself. The cushion hanger is supported on each side of the machine in a rubber block, so we would need to inspect this rubber block for wear. Wear in the block would allow the cushion to lower. We would also look for splits, any signs of problems developing here. Each of the rubber blocks is installed in a metal box. We'd be inspecting this box for fatigue, splitting, checking the hardware also to make sure the bolts are secure. Where the hanger leg is welded to the tube, we would look for metal fatigue, any signs of failure in these areas. We would also need to follow the leg down and inspect the hardware where the plank is attached to the hanger leg. We would inspect the entire pin curtain, making sure the stitching is good, rivets are tight, the curtain rod itself is not bent, and also checking the condition of the phenolic insert where the curtain rod goes out through the frame of the machine. When a bowling ball strikes the cushion, our machine starts in cycle by actuating this start switch. Our preventive maintenance of the cushion assembly then would include a visual inspection of the start switch and the various components associated with it. We'd be looking at the start switch protection plate, which is a small steel plate directly below the start switch to prevent breakage. We'd be looking at the hardware again to make sure everything is secure and inspecting the extension spring also to make sure that the spring is good and that the loops at the ends of the springs are not wearing through. Newer production machines no longer use a start switch, and we would not find this on the 90XL machines. We've replaced the start switch with a ball detector. The cushion assembly we've been looking at was in like new condition. So we've taken one out of a pin spotter that shows some real use over the years. And we can see this horizontal crack running down through the plank to the point where the rivet would no longer stay in without a little help. We can also see the results of not having the pad in the proper position, 
so that flying pins will force the curtain against the hanger leg, causing the damage that we see here. If we turn this over and look at the facing, we'll see also the facing has been damaged to the point where the mechanic has come up with a little field repair in, in order to get a little longer service out of this. However, this does have a bad effect on the ball getting into the exit. The broken plank that we're looking at would be replaced by this new plank. This is a regular hardwood plank that AMF uses. It is laminated five pieces of hard maple laminated together to give it the strength necessary to take the abuse that we had talked about earlier. In order to get a better view of the components that make up the cushion assembly, we've taken a new one up out of the machine. We're going to disassemble it so we can get a good view of what the vinyl cushion cover looks like, followed then by the Buna rubber. These are the items we would be inspecting for wear or deterioration. The pin curtain itself, the sponge rubber, and lastly, the hardwood plank. All of these are held together by 16 vinyl rivets. The plank is attached to the hanger weldment that we're looking at here, and the hanger weldment is supported in the machine on each side by two rubber blocks. So we will be looking at the condition of these blocks to make sure they don't show any excessive wear and they will continue to support the hanger at the proper height. When working on or in the pin spotter, AMF strongly recommends that the power plug to the pin spotter be removed and the plug placed into a lockout box. The box is then locked so that only the mechanic who has removed the power plug can re-energize the pin spotter. When a badly worn or missing rivet has been located, we need to replace that missing rivet. And it's suggested that we coat this shoulder with something similar to dishwashing liquid. Rubber lube will work, anything like this to make the rivet slide in more easily. We put the rivet through as far as we can possibly get it, and then we'll pull it through from the other side. We've inserted the rivet from the front of the plank in far enough to protrude from the back as we see it here. We use this crank that has been drilled to accept the stem of the rivet in order to pull the rivet the remaining distance through the plank. So we put the crank on and we pull it on through until the shoulder that we had lubricated comes through the back side of the plank. This completes our visual inspection of all the components that make up our cushion assembly. With timely replacement of these worn parts, the cushion assembly's life will be greatly extended. We've completed our overview of this assembly. For more detailed instructions, we have the AMF Management Training School in Richmond, Virginia. Our next video in this series will be on the carpet area of the pin spot.